Hello, my name is Marta Yebra, and in this short video from the Vegetation Remote Sensing video series, I'm going to give you some examples on the use of remote sensing to map a land cover or vegetation distribution on the ground and biodiversity. Traditional classification of vegetation by remote sensing has entailed the visual interpretation of aerial photographs. Recognition of target is the key to interpretation and information extraction. Uh, observing the difference between targets and their backgrounds involves comparing different targets based on any of all of the visual elements that you may have heard of. That, that, that these are tone, shape, size, pattern, texture, shadows, and association. Visual interpretation using these elements is often a part of our daily lives, whether or not we are conscious about it. Uh, you may have already worked out what is this in this um, slide uh, using these uh, visual elements, but uh, if not, uh, here you have the answer. It's a fruit tree or cut in, in Spain. The focus of vegetation detecting by remote sensing have shifted to the interpretation of satellite imagery. Approaches uh, to classification are generally referred to as supervised, supervised or unsupervised, but this materia has been already explained in, in the video series about interpretation remote sensing data, so I'm not going to go into details here. Um, however, I would like to reiterate that image classification is possible because different elements of the landscape present different spectral responses. But even a same element or similar vegetation type, like, like for example crops that have similar spectral curve with a significant minimum <coughs> of reflectance in the visible portion of the spectrum and a maximum in the near infrared, have slight uh, differences in the shape of the reflectance spectrum that are evident enough to be used to the identification of different crops. As you can see, for example, in the results of the classification of uh, a various uh, image of uh, irrigated crops in San Luis Valley in the United States. The same applies to different tree of shrub F species. Uh, again, this species presents similar spectra curve, but a slight differences in the shape of the spectra that can be used for the identification of vegetation types. This is the base uh, for mapping biodiversity and in species distribution, for example. There are now new scientific approaches that integrate uh, the spectral remote sensing approaches that I have just mentioned with uh, phylogenetics and chemical composition. This is uh, what collectively is called spectronomics. This is slide so an example of uh, the organization of uh, tropical plants uh, based on these principles. Um, note uh, that uh, the, difference, the differences in it, uh, there are different uh, leaf constituents uh, here in this plot, and the differences in each uh, leaf constitute contribute to the unique, u uniqueness of the species chemical fingerprints. So the Carnier Institute at Salford University is being using a very high fidelity imaging spectrometer to map biodiversity based on this uh, concept uh, uh, of spectronomics. Here you have a, a picture of the aircraft uh, and one of the sensors mounted on it, uh, which is the very high fidelity visible shortwave infrared imaging spectrometer that measures uh, in the wavelengths uh, from visible to the shore wave infrared. Um, and it, it also have a dual laser, uh, full waveform uh, LiDAR system, and a high resolution visible to near infrared imaging spectrometer. So using the concept of spectronomics and uh, that uh, platform I have just presented, uh, Greg Asner and collaborators have mapped uh, bio biodiversity as, as it is shown in this slide. The imaging spectrometer and the LiDAR system are flow over a rainforest site. 
um, and the LiDAR uh, provides the guidance uh, for the spectroscopy sampling of the rainforest canopies uh, and also control the variation in three-dimensional architecture and solar and sensor viewing ag angles. So in this step, in step number one, um, uh, the LiDAR data is used to extract the best spectra that is so in, in red uh, that can be statistically compared to spectra collected in, in other neighboring uh, species. Uh, the spectral signatures are compiled at a high resolution in an image format along with the canopy structure data derived from LiDAR and, and also uh, derived from LiDAR uh, some information uh, about the uh, intercrown south and other known canopy surface. The selected canopy spectra are reduced to equivalent leaf spectra using radiative transfer modeling inversion techniques and also uh, an algorithm is applied to, to compute uh, spectral diversity uh, from, from that uh, leaf spectra. In this map in red, uh, you can see uh, uh, areas uh, with high spectral diversity and in green areas with low spectral uh, diversity. Fine. Uh, in the next step, the diversity is converted into plant species richness using a statistic method. And then the spectral signatures um, are also converted to chemical fingerprints, as we previously saw, uh, using regression analysis. And altogether, the spectra and chemicals are used to search a, a database uh, for family, genus, species, and potentially, um, depending on, on the environmental uh, settings of the study site, you can also detect the species. Finally, uh, additional detections are carried out at different taxonomic scales to identify particular species of uh, interest. Mm. In this slide, I saw an example of the hyperspectral cluster analysis of rainforest species based on their uh, reflected light uh, in the full range of the spectra. Uh, in, uh, so instead of uh, having the, the, the unique uh, vegetation uh, response curve, uh, here we have colors that, um, that call from the spectral signature of each species with yellow, red, so in high and green blue so in low reflectance and then the the dendrogram here on your right shows the the spectranomic clustering of the species so it's really uh, the principle is is the same that and an, an supervised classification to finish with this video, I'm going to present uh, the National Dynamic Land Cover Data Set of Australia that uh, Geoscience Australia has derived using vegetation classification techniques based on time series or EVI from Moody's and different dynamics of vegetation. The time series includes uh, hundreds of snapshots of vegetation greenness for each uh, pixel of the it's a Moody's pixel area across the continent over uh, more than eight years period. Here you can see an example uh, uh, here on the top uh, of the time series display for a closed forest in red and a, and a irrigated graminoids in, in blue. The ABR time series for its uh, uh, mo pi modi pixel area was characterized using 12 time series coefficients uh, we describe the statistical, phenological, and seasonal characteristics of the land cover. And then uh, a clustering approach again was applied uh, to these 12 coefficients to define homogeneous regions with similar greenness dynamics over time. Regions that show similar greenness characteristics over time uh, were assigned to the same uh, land cover category. So in this slide, I, I saw uh, an example of the phenology or, or changes over time of a crop area. The green fractional cover, as you can see, raised uh, sharply as the crops mature and then remains high for a little time before a sharp drop uh, in the green fractional cover after the crop is harvested. 
there is then an interval of zero greenness uh, here, which follows um, uh, the, the fallow period. So time series analysis of the cropping phenology can identify a range of uh, features. For example, the, the number the number of uh, cropping cycles within a year, also the number of uh, cumula cumulative time of uh, fallow periods, or the timing of uh, crop uh, cycles, whether these uh, cycles happen in summer or, or winter, for example. And also um, the, the area under this uh, curve that represents uh, the crop green biomass. And of course, uh, interannual changes in crop green biomass uh, can be also observed with these uh, graphs. In addition to the land cover map, this uh, product from Geoscience Australia also contains three layers that show the trend in annual greenness characteristics over time. This trend layer highlights areas that are becoming, are becoming greener or, or less green over time. As an example, here you can see the, the trend of uh, EVI um, and the trend is, it was calculated as the, as the slope of the line uh, for a linear regression of the annual, annual EVI mean values. So the trend data can be used to identify, for example, areas where the vegetation is showing in internal annual changes over time. And as I previously mentioned, it is important to know that, um, that the trend data play a valuable role in detecting change. However, additional data is required to identify which, dri which is the driver uh, of that uh, change in greenness. For example, an increase in greenness may represent an increase in the presence of invasive weeds rather than an improvement in productivity or condition. I w and just uh, to finish this short video, I, I just uh, leave here some other examples of global vegetation maps in case you want to explore them uh, for, for your use in your projects of this course. <laughs>